Hello and welcome to the Chronicles of Owning a Chinese Scooter, Part 2. Now, in this portion of the video, you're just going to see me unbox the scooter, so I sped it up as it's quite a long process in itself. And here's where you'll see all the braces holding the scooter in place. See it going down to the forks. And speaking of forks, here's that front axle bolt. That is going to be a pain, but I'll show you a little trick on how to get it out without it being too much of a fuss. You can see that it supports it from the top at the stem, even supports the wheel, and even supports the rear portion of the bike. So here you're going to see me remove the actual uh, chassis uh, braces for the scooter. Uh, it's two 13 millimeter uh, bolts, or nuts and bolts. Uh, there's about eight on each side, and I personally like to remove it from the bottom uh, only. That way you could just lift the entire crate and then just be left with the bottom portion of uh, the crate. Now, rookie mistake I made here was that I forgot to remove the tire. So you're going to see me lift it here, struggle a little bit. Well, maybe not struggle too much, but just to avoid any uh, complications in the future, you might want to remove the tire beforehand because a little arm still do uh, reach out and can grab anything within the vicinity it could possibly get a hold of. And here, you're going to see two 10 millimeter bolts. I cannot loosen them by hand, as I thought I could. But this holds your speedometer in place. Now you are going to have to raise the rear portion of the scooter to get the rear suspension mounted properly. It's not too difficult, but it can be quite tedious, and I do recommend a second person to help you out if necessary. So now it's time to get that guy bolted up there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show the little bit of accessories that it comes with. Like the mounting thingy. Pretty sure it's just called a mounting bracket, but I'm just going to call it thingy for now. So yes, that red thing I pulled out of nowhere is actually the kickstand. It does provide nuts and bolts needed. Uh, nobody saw that. That was a complete professional accident. No kickstands were harmed in the filming of this video. See how gently I put it down? How could I harm it? But this guy, that guy. Now this is where the fun time of getting the speedometer installed with the 10 millimeter bolt. You can see I'm sad there because I couldn't do it by hand. But went ahead and got the impact, loosened up the bolts, and then got it quickly installed. You could also use the mounting brackets for the handlebars to go ahead and get the handlebars mounted and adjust it in a way that you feel most uh, comfortable to ride with. Side note, you don't have to go crazy with tightening these bolts. They're pretty sturdy, but you never know with uh, the type of uh, quality aluminum or metal that is being used. So be cautious and just tighten it just enough to where you know it is not going to just shake loose after a few rides. Just to uh, aid in it, by the way, you could also use some blue Loctite to make sure that the bolts stay in place.
So now is the fun part of installing the left hand controls with the blinkers, high beams and horn. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a little bit of pressure, as these are aluminum screws and they can strip quite easily. You're going to notice a uh, little hole in where the stem is, right about yeah, and right there is a little piece that goes inside the hole. Once you line it up, tighten the bolts a little bit to get it uh, just mounted up, slide it into place, and tighten the bolts all the way. You should have no problem with this little guy moving up and down once it's aligned properly, and everything should be good to go from there on out. Now around here you can see it finally hold itself in place and once you're done with that just tighten the screws and you are essentially done with this part of the step. And now it's time for the front fender with three 10 millimeter bolts with three holes to go through. Now this is where I personally just like to hand tighten the bolts just to at least get one in. Then I'll work on the other two bolts aligning them. Then I will tighten them with the impact. So you can see the little notches for the speedometer. And there are the little wings for it. But now I'm going to show you the little trick I use to help get that front axle bolt off in a much easier fashion than it would normally be. Otherwise, you might try to get it loose and then have the scooter come crashing down on your fingers. And that is no bueno in that little spot. So here you'll notice that I get the scooter on the center stand, but I keep the jack underneath it just for added support. I'm holding on to the scooter's handlebar at the same time, and this is all just to make installing the front wheel a little bit easier for me. Now this part can be tricky. For one, there's this little guy inside of the brake uh, pads himself, which stops uh, you know them from closing. Now I was trying to do this right the first time, but it can be a little bit of trial and error. You must have the spacer installed on the brake side of it while aligning it. The problem I kept having was that since it's such a tight tolerance, that little uh, the little spacer kept falling out. Now here, there's the spacer I'm talking about. Now the way I was able to get this on was uh, get the brake side in first, uh, maintain where the spacer is located and make sure it lines up with the hole, and same with the front speedometer. I aligned the teeth up, make sure it's nice and snug, 
and tried to get him as uh, lined up as possible without having the little spacer on the brake side come loose and then just making an overall nuisance to put the wheel on as I found this to be one of the trickiest parts but once I got it all lined up it was all good to go Now I do apologize for this part, as I did use a hammer to get the bolt, uh, or actually the actual, uh, through the actual, uh, wheel. It wasn't too much of a hassle, just one or two hits and then it was all the way through. Now, the scooter finally comes off of the crate. I go ahead and get the jack out of the way. Keep, kick the scooter off of the center stand and move it a couple of feet forward. And voila! You got your GY6 powered scooter off of the chassis brace that it came with, or the container, whatever they want to call it. And then you're that much closer to riding your scooter. But there's still a few more steps I'd like to take care of before actually getting it started first. And that is the oil change and the spark plug change. Now here I am installing the Prisma magnetic drain plug. It's a billet outer piece with a little magnet inside of it, right at the uh, base of that spring there. And like it, you know, like the description says, it basically captures all the metallic uh, fragments that are just floating around inside the engine, especially one that hasn't been broken in yet. So I figured I'd might as well get this to be one of the first modifications I install on the engine to try to promote longevity. Now after draining the oil, I went ahead and put in some uh, 10W40. Takes about 0.8 to 0.9 liters of uh, oil, which isn't much. So you could basically get one of those five gallon jugs from uh, Walmart for around $20 of your preferred oil. I'm gonna be running uh, Rotella T6 in this engine soon. So for break-in oil, I'm just going to run ten, uh, Pennzoil 10W40 uh, Platinum. I'm going to use this for the first 50 miles and then swap out to the Rotella T6 uh, 10W40. Then here, I'm going to show you how the dipstick will look. And it should give you an idea of what to expect. Here I'm just doing a little test on the turn signals, even the horn, but I'm not going to, you know, 
kill your ears with that. All right, and now we're ready for the first start of this new scooter. Okay, so it's turning on momentarily, but it shuts off immediately. Maybe it just has air in the fuel lines. One thing I forgot to swap was the NGK clone spark plug. And here to the left is a genuine NGK C7 HSA plug. The gap is much closer to around 0.28 rather than the 0.35 of the clone. Let's see if that makes a difference. So at this point, I realized it was something a little bit more difficult to deal with, as it wasn't a spark plug causing the issue, but it was a fuel delivery related issue. And uh, well, the sad part is, is that these new uh, GY6150 scooters, well, they have an issue that I'm going to show you right now. As you can see here. They do not allow you to open the bottom portion of the carburetor to get to the jets to clean them if necessary. I guess they're really trying to crack down on emissions on these little guys. But I hope to see you in part 3 where I solve this problem. So removing the bike from the crate wasn't so bad. It's a shame that the carburetor gave me a hassle from the beginning of ownership of this bike, but I will be showing you an upgrade that I believe every GY6150 owner should make even if it's their first modification. That will be in part three. See you there.